welcome back everyone. Uh, this is Nicky Romero. We're here at the Protocol Studios back in Veyendal. Um First of all, I want to thank everybody for all the great support and all the good reactions on the last studio video we did uh, with Ready to Rumble. Um, sometimes you just want to give something back to everybody who's been supporting you for a long, long time. And I remember when I started, there was barely anything on YouTube about producing music. So I just hope that I can give you guys something back by a little insight on the on the songs that I produced. Today, we're going to be talking about Novel. Everybody has been asking me how I did that song. I don't know why, because it's not really a special song. It's not really something different than I usually do, but I'm more than happy to talk a little bit about the song. Um, first of all, uh, how do you start a song like this? I think it's the question in general, how do you start a song? Cause, um, but I think the answer will be the same always, because you, you can start a song in many different ways. You can start it with just a piano, you can start it with a vocal, you can get even inspiration from drums, it can be literally everything. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about how I started the song and what was the key to get to the melody of Novel. Basically, it was really, really easy. Uh, I know it sounds like it. Um, or I know whenever you say something is easy, it, it's always about you have to come to the idea. Of course, the same goes for Novel. But I really was just playing around with um, with the piano. And if you do melodies in your song, I really, I really recommend to uh, to buy a sustain pedal. And it's really this small thing here. And you can literally just you know, you sustain on your on your music production. I really use it a lot just to give it a little more um, feeling to playing piano and all that. So I would just play. Let me see if I can reduce the latency here. So now there's a lot of latency because of the amount of plugins. So if I would just do it like this, I have to put the volume up a little bit, but it would be, it would be something like this. So nothing really special, it's just some chords and actually the, um, the break part of the piano is just black keys, so it's not even like something super, super difficult on the piano. But then when you have this, you got to transfer it to, a, to like a lead melody and that is something that you just have to try. It's just trial and error to me. So if I would, if I would uh, write this chords, it would just be like this and I would just let them play for a while. Um, And I would just I would just layer it with some other sounds like an orchestra for example. And a, and a, and a bass and the bass literally plays the same as the lowest key in the in the piano in the piano part here. So it's just following the lower key. Um, nothing really special. Making the bass to a to a chord progression it could be difficult sometimes because you don't always have to follow the chords that you play. You don't always have to pick the lowest key, but to me it sounds the most natural to pick the lowest key in this song. Uh, but you can play around and, you know, transpose or you can even pick a different key from the same chord whenever you think that sounds better. For Novel, it's just really easy. It's just following the bass and that, that's being played in the, in the, chord, in the chord progression. So how do you start the melody? Literally, that's just, just like I mentioned before, that's just trial and error. So if I would pick a sound here. Uh, so I would just literally pick like a simple nexus here. Uh, I don't even know, it's just a preset here called let, let the lead kick with nothing on it, no processing, just like it is. Then you can literally, I would sometimes just put an EQ on here just to make it sound a little less uh, aggressive. I'm going to play around with the melody. On top of the chords that you already play. Maybe solo. Up. 
But then the melody, it's just mm -hmm. literally play around. So I know this is going to be the keys I'm using. So it has to be somewhere around those keys that the melody have to be played. So I'm just going to layer this piano here. Okay, so the chords play here. And uh, just to make it easier, you can take the instrument, like write this. Or you can just pick a piano sound. It doesn't really matter for the melody. As long as you just start with the song, you just want to have a sound that you can listen to for a long time. Otherwise, you're going to get irritated about the sound. And that's not going to help you in your workflow. So I would just go for an easy sound, like a piano or an easy an easy sound with not too much uh, processing. So um, if it sounds good on a boring sound, it will sound great on a really fat sound. That's my opinion. So um, I'll just play around like this. So I know I can use those keys. So I would just go something like. And you know what the thing is with um, a lot of songs that you know, that stick in your head. For example, Reload of Sebastian Ingrosso. Um, that really is a song that is about the simplicity, but the simplicity is the complexity at the same time. It's really hard to make something easy um, or sound easy. Most of the time, it's the most complex thing to make something sound easy, but I don't know. Same as with Reload, it sounds so easy. The melody sounds so easy, but it's not only the melody. It's the chords. It's the use of the sound. It's the layers being used. It's it's about the bass line, it's about the thi everything that comes together and makes the song as good as it is. So I try to, to make it as easy as possible in the song, so uh, the melody would stick to your head really, really easy. And if you have a good song, then it's most of the times just a few different um, keys, and it's not, not too complex. So same goes for, for Novell, it's really easy. <laughs> And it's a lot of repetition as well. It's just repeating different keys and then in a different order. Um, as soon as I found the melody, as soon as I found the melody, I would just go for the bass sound. And the bass sound is just here playing from an ES2. It's playing the same thing all over again, so it's not really complex at all. Um, just to solo them out. It really is like an easy sound with just an, uh, a high cut that makes makes the top end disappear and it's you know so it's only operating at the frequencies it needs to um then going to the build up and this the uses of the sound <laughs> this is a really funny part because you know to make a sound like this Usually, most of the producers would use an LFO, and to, you know, to make it to tweak it easier to to get the automation right. And I was honestly just too lazy to to figure out how I could get the LFO working on this part of the song. So I would just literally play it, and just it looks like this. It's so funny. It literally is just a lot of keys. So it's no LFO. It's not timed. It's not even stretched, and it's not even. Uh, quantized right but it just sounds well in the song so I would just leave it there just sometimes it doesn't even matter if things are done right or not as long as it sounds good and same goes for this so every note that you hear is just being played by me on on the keyboard or repeated in the in the media information so uh, nothing special uh, what's in is it is like a silence but then with with thousands and thousands of plugins on it the original sound would sound like this Right. And it is forwarded to a bus, and the bus is simply doing some reverb and compression, and also a little bit of sidechain, of course. <laughs> Okay, 
so what's going on in the break? Um, as you can see, it's not so many different layers. Just a few things playing, about eight, nine things at the same time. Uh, we have a sidechain channel on top that's just playing a click track, just for reference and also for the to make sure that the sidechain input signal is as short as possible. Um, then we have a couple of layers, and I bounced out a, a couple of layers here because the media was getting stressed out uh, most of the times so when I played them at the same time. So I made a quick bounce. Uh, it's, as you can see, it's BIP, stands for bounce in place, just to get the layers right. And also, uh, whenever it's wave, it's easier to edit. So if there's thousands of tracks of media information, you have no clue when something's going on, what kind of channel or what channel it is. So when it sounds good, make sure you bounce it as quick as possible so you know it will sound good all the time. That's at least what works for me. Um, so you have them nice and tight together here, all the synths together, and I just have a layer of flute here. Just a little bit of top end. Um, but if you want to know what layers I've used to get to achieve the sound as it is now, um, it just really is a silent, another silent for the break, a bouncing place. Another one with transposed an octave down with just um, a small high cut on it. And there is a rave synth with a few different plugins on it, and that is Nexus. Then another silent, and that that is just playing a small chord somehow. It just feels like it's playing a chord at least. But everything has a lot of plugins, and I use a lot of UAD, um, a lot of ozone, a lot of. Uh, waves plugins, especially the L2, the sound shifter pitch, and uh, a lot of the glue. I really like the compressor here. Um, and that is the most part of the synths, and it's not doing so much extra. Let me see if I have something. I just use the compressor as sidechain that is linked to this small input here, and the trigger is just like I said, as short as possible. <laughs> Then there are some chords playing. And of course, depending on the key of your song, I'd like to, uh, to cut the most of the low frequencies of the chords. Uh, most of the times to a frequency of like 360 to maybe 400 hertz, depending on what key the song is, of course, because that is that will probably tell you what the best frequency is to, to cut it off. Because in some keys, you just need certain frequencies, and in some keys, uh, you can cut them out. So, um, but that is a little bit of harmonic mixing, like I mentioned in the in the video earlier, um, or that I mentioned in the Ready to Rumble video that I would like to spend a different tutorial on, because that is a really big part of, of my mixing process. Um, Another layer cut on three, 310 hertz, nothing special again. But together it, it sounds good enough to fill the gap between the bass and the lead synths, so that is basically what it's doing. Um, Instruments used, again, it's, I think it's a Nexus and a Massive this time, but it's just an easy sound. You can make it with literally any synth that you find. All right, um, that's it for part one. I um, hope you guys like it so far. Uh, in part two, I'll be looking at the kick and bass a little bit and about mixing, uh, the master chain, and also a little bit about harmonic mixing. Um, if you like it, it will be available in about one week. Go ahead and put it in your schedule. Um, hope you guys like it. If you have any comments, let me know. And if you want to know something particular, something special, just let us know in the comments and hopefully I can look at that, into that next time. Thank you so much.